Welcome back to our live stream service tonight at North Lake. Sorry about that, uh, the audio issues to begin with, but we're ready to go and worship God tonight. Thank you for joining us, and I'm glad you can hear me this time. Uh, to introduce myself, I'm Corbin Smith. I'm Minister of Discipleship here at North Lake and have been for the last uh, five, six years, I think. Um, so Brother Danny got to go on a nice, well-deserved vacation with his family, and so uh, we're glad to be able to fill in for him tonight. Um, so as we do that, let's go ahead and begin the service by going to the Lord in prayer. Father, we're grateful tonight to be here, to be able to listen to your word. God, to be able to understand what you say about what it means to be part of a church. To understand who you are and what you want us to do as individuals following you and also as a body of believers following you. Lord, tonight would you help us understand the things that you have in your word. Would you help us to remember the things that are true, that was to forget the things that are false that we might come to know you more effectively, we might come to live for you in a more holy way, so that you might be glorified in all the earth because of us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. What does it mean to be a member of a church? When you join a church, what are you actually doing? When you leave a church, what are you actually doing? Is it more like getting into and out of a Costco or a Sam's Club membership where you pay your fee and you get a membership card and you come and attend and, and get what you want for a discount and then you leave whenever you want and you're out? All you got to do is stop paying. Or is it more like getting in and out of a celebrity fan club where there's this hero person that you want to get close to, that you want to rub off on you maybe, or maybe even to make you more influential? Or you commit to a person and... If they leave, you're out. Or is it more like getting into and out of a high school relationship where you just ask someone on a date and as long as things are going well and you feel good and they like you and you like them and they don't say anything that makes you mad, you stay together and you enjoy it. But as soon as they do something that you don't like or they are no longer making you happy, you're out. Or is it more like getting into and out of a marriage or family relationship where it's a long-term commitment through thick and thin to be there for one another, present to make a difference and to help one another grow and change, even if you do get mad at each other sometimes? Recently at North Lake, uh, Pastor Danny's message on April 19th got a lot of uh, following, a lot of views that have brought a lot of you uh, to hear some of our services over the last few weeks. And for the first time, you're joining us in these last few weeks to hear biblical messages, to hear Brother Danny bring God's word, and to join us for worship. And a lot of you have expressed how much you've enjoyed our services from all over the country, all over the United States, pretty much every state somebody's watching, and from many countries around the world, you've expressed how much you've enjoyed worshiping with us. In fact, some have enjoyed our worship services so much that they've asked to actually join our church. And so it begs the question, in our weird scenario of COVID-19, what does it look like to be a church member? What is, biblically, a church member? Can you be a church member miles and miles away? Can you be a church member from the other side of the earth? If so, what does that look like? If not, what, does, what is your role at North Lake? And what is North Lake's role in your life? So the way we're going to address this question, we're going to answer the question, what is biblical church membership? We're going to collect the scriptural data under the first question, what is a biblical church? And we're going to analyze it according to our mission statement here at North Lake. And it's similar to what Brother Danny talked about this past Sunday when he talked about Sardis, the Reformed Church. We're going to look at how a biblical church exalts the Savior, equips the saved, evangelizes the sinner, and encourages the soul. And give a few details in there. And from that, we're going to actually draw out what is then a, an individual among that biblical church what is an individual member supposed to be? What does it mean to be a part of a group of people called the church? And finally, we'll look at some implications for North Lake's role in your life. If you're a North Lake member, what that looks like. And if you're not a North Lake member, what's our role? And finally, we'll spend a few minutes talking about what it looks like if you're far away to be a member of a church in your area and how North Lake can help you with that. So the point of tonight's message for North Lakers is to help you understand what we're supposed to be as a church, what it means to be a member here, and what we're called to do for believers around the world. 
for believers around the country and around the world, this message is supposed to help you understand what a church is, biblically, and what it means to be a member, and how to find a biblical church in your area. So just to give it to you up front, here's the main point, and then we're going to look at some sc- the scripture and how it supports this, this main idea. A biblical church membership, biblical church membership is committing to build personal relationships with a group of believers for the sake of their Christian growth and allowing them to do the same for you. Say that again. Biblical church membership is committing yourself to build personal relationships with a specific group of believers for the sake of their Christian growth and for the sake of your Christian growth. So let's jump right in to answering the question, what is a biblical church? A biblical church does four things. They exalt the Savior, they equip the saved, they evangelize the sinner, and they encourage the soul. But what do those things mean? Well, first, the biblical church exalts the Savior by having biblical doctrine. A biblical church believes the right things about who God is and what he's done in the world. Things like God as Trinity, that he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That God the Father is God. God the Son, Jesus, is God. And God the Holy Spirit is God. As you can see, the first chapter of John in 2 Corinthians 3.17. It also means believing the gospel properly, that Jesus is the only way to heaven. That he alone has died in such a way as a sacrifice to cover our sins so we can have forgiveness. And so that the Holy Spirit can actually come into us and change us from dead hearts to live hearts, to live a new life in Christ. Biblical doctrine means believing the right thing about God's word. Believing that this Bible, the Old Testament and New Testament, are God's word. And that he is speaking without any error in everything that he's trying to teach us through this word. So for an example of how the Bible really commands us to have biblical doctrine, you can look at Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Paul says there, I'm astonished that you're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but that there are some who are troubled, who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to To the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again. If anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So you can see in Galatians 1 there that Paul is emphasizing how a biblical church maintains the true gospel. And you can see the same thing in the middle of the first chapter of Titus. We don't have time to read it, but I'll give you the verses. Titus 1.9, Titus 1.14 really stresses the need for church leaders and church members to maintain a focus on biblical doctrine and to not be led astray into error. But a biblical church also exalts the Savior through biblical preaching. And this means having worship services in the entire church organized around hearing God's word. It's a church where the music, the songs, the prayers, the congregation, all of it supports and leads to and actually enhances the congregation's ability to hear God's word. And that when the pastor gets on the stage, he's actually telling people what God's word says, not what he thinks, what anybody else thinks, but what God's word says and how it should change your life. You can see that in 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. I'll read those verses for you really quick. 1 Timothy 4, 11 through 16. It says this, Paul talking to Timothy says, Command and teach these things. After he just talked about Jesus as the Savior, the living God. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, and in love, and faith, and purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given to you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. You can see Paul is convinced that it's by focusing on God's word in public, in the gathering of the church, that a church and all its members maintain the true course of faith. But a biblical church doesn't just exalt the Savior. Out of that worship, they also equip the saved. They're driven to equip the saved. And that looks like discipleship, having godly focus on discipleship, 
and a godly leadership team. First, under discipleship, a biblical church emphasizes, and, and it's heavy on their mind, that they must pass the faith along to the next spiritual generation. And I don't just mean boomers to Gen X and Gen X to millennials and millennials to Gen Z. I mean spiritual generations where you actually help someone come to Christ. As a church member, you help someone else. You bring them into that group. You help them grow, and then they help someone else grow, and they help someone else grow. You can see this in 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 2, where Paul says to Timothy, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He's, he's encouraging his next generation. And he says in verse 2, what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. That's four generations. When we see in a natural family four generations of people, we're really impressed. And we should look for that same thing spiritually, that we want to actually make a new generation of believers who can make a new generation, who can make a new generation, and thereby impact the whole world for Christ, helping them to grow in the faith. So a biblical church emphasizes the need for discipleship, generation after generation, for every member to be focused on helping other members grow in the faith. You can also see that in Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians 12, where it talks about how the spiritual gifts play a role in that, and every individual has their own gifting in order to enable them to build up the whole body together into Christ, into mature manhood. That's Ephesians 4, 12 through 17. But a biblical church also equips the saved through having godly leadership, through having godly leadership, where they have male pastors that are focused on God's word that have lives that reflect their faith in Christ. Their families are, are good, they love their families, they care for them, and they show by that how they can love and care for the sheep in the church as they guide them. And in addition to that, a godly, a biblical church encourages all the rest of the members who are also godly, male and female, to make a huge difference in ministry, everyone to be involved in the work of the ministry, to spread the gospel to the next person and the next and make disciples. You can see that in 1 Timothy 3, 1 through 13. And I'll read this passage a little long. We'll go through it because it shows the need for uh, godly overseers or pastors and godly deacons. It says, The saying is trustworthy. 1 Timothy 3, 1. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer or pastor, he desires a noble task. Therefore, a pastor must be above reproach. The husband of one wife sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone doesn't know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into condemnation of the devil." Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. Deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. And let them also be tested first, then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. Although for those who serve well as deacons, gain a good standing for themselves, and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. So those are a lot of verses that emphasize the need for a biblical church to have godly male pastors and deacons and the rest of the church, male and female, to constantly be, pre be pushing forward in discipleship and development. You can see some of that also uh, in Titus chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, and 2, 1 through 8, where the rest of the church is expected to also be leaders among themselves. A biblical church also evangelizes the sinner. They, have, they focus on evangelism. You can see that in Romans 10, 9 through 16, which basically says, how will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without a preacher? And how is there to be a preacher unless they're sent? And the concept is that without someone going and sharing the gospel personally, evangelism doesn't happen, salvation doesn't happen. So the biblical church emphasizes the need for everyone to share the gospel so that people may believe and, and not receive the condemnation that we see in John 3.17, but the salvation, eternal life that we see in John 3.16. A 
biblical church also emphasizes missions. You can read Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and Acts 1, 8, about how a church should focus on ministry everywhere from here to there to very far. It should, at North Lake, we even structure our budget that way, according to the local area, as represented by Jerusalem in Acts 1, 8, the larger area outside of that, our region, of Judea, our nation, which we represent by Samaria, and all the world. We give and we make effort at North Lake to try to be mission-minded for the whole world, and that's part of what it means to be a biblical church. And the biblical church finally evangelizes the sinner through service. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 is where Jesus says, be salt and light to the world. Be a city set on a hill. Essentially, if you're not making a difference, if you're not actually doing something in the world to show God's love so that people glorify God themselves, actually tell how great God is, that's what Jesus says there in Matthew 5. If we're not doing that, then we're not doing the full picture of evangelism. Biblical church finally encourages the soul through fellowship and community and also through discipline. On the first one, if you read the description of the early church in Acts 2, verses 41 through 47, you can see it, it talks about how they're together. They're in one another's houses. They're eating dinner together. They know how many are being added. They have a specific group of people that are getting together in each other's presence, in each other's homes, knowing each other's needs. It talks about how they meet each other's needs with their possessions. They're aware of the life situation of everyone else in that group. A biblical church is a church made up of people who know one another personally, know one another's needs, and know how to be there for them. Biblical church has a group of people that know one another in personal, present relationship and that do not ever neglect those needs. Finally, a biblical church, you can see this in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 through 17, a biblical church has discipline, and that sounds so mean, right? Why would a biblical church have discipline? Isn't that rude? I think we're all aware, especially if, you've, if this has happened to you during quarantine, maybe as there was little structure for you, Maybe you ate what you shouldn't have. You ate a little too much. Maybe you went to bed too late. You got up too late. Maybe you weren't even performing as well at your job while you're working from home. And maybe you noticed how without some kind of guidelines and some structure, you actually kind of got out of your normal routine and started doing things not so well. You didn't feel as good. You weren't performing as well. The same is true spiritually. If we don't have people helping us to understand the guidelines and to call us back to those guidelines and give us some structure, then we're not actually helping one another stay on the right track and remain in holy living. So you can see that in Matthew 18, where Jesus tells his disciples, if someone falls off into sin, go and address them personally. Call them back to righteousness. And if they don't listen, bring to other people who know them, so there's the relationship already established, who know them, and call them to repentance. If they still won't listen, bring them before the church, a group of people that know them, that they're committed to, that there's accountability to and call them to repent. And if they still won't, and then you remove them from the church. There's a sense in the Bible that a church group knows one another and holds one another in accountable. There's truth and there's love, and neither can be sacrificed. So, a biblical church exalts the Savior with biblical doctrine and biblical preaching. A biblical church equips the saved through focus on discipleship and God's leadership. A biblical church evangelizes the sinner through a focus on evangelism, missions, and service. And finally, a biblical church encourages the soul through fellowship and community and discipline. And so now we can answer the question, what is biblical church membership? Because if a church is a group of people, then being a member of that church is being one part of that larger effort. Your job is just to do all those things we just listed, do your part of fulfilling them of helping the whole group work together to make it happen by using your particular spiritual gifts. And so we can ask again, is, is, a biblical, is biblical church membership like a Costco or Sam's Club membership where you just pay your money and you come and you get your discounts and you get your benefits and it's just about you and you don't really talk to people because you don't want to talk to them in an aisle. It's kind of weird. So you just leave afterwards with all your stuff. No, a, a biblical, biblical church membership is, is not just for you to come and get and then to leave, or to just drop whenever you feel like it. It's way more relational than that. You come here for the people, to study God's Word together. Okay, well, maybe, maybe biblical church membership for, is more like a celebrity fan club, like 
I really like the pastor, and he's like really good at preaching, so I want to be, uh, I want to come and follow him. If he goes to another church, I'm going to leave this church and go with him. No, biblical church membership is not committing to a person that's a leader. It's committing to a group of people. In fact, if the pastor leaves, that's when you need to stay the most, because that's when all the other people need each other the most, is when their shepherd is gone. Biblical church membership is not like being part of a celebrity fan club. It's not about the pastor. It's not about the leader. It's about the people together, knowing one another. Okay, so relationship. I got it, relationship. But maybe it's kind of like a high school relationship. If, if they're mean to me, then I should be able to leave, right? Wouldn't that, be, wouldn't that make sense? Otherwise, as long as they're making me happy, I'll stay. But why would I stay if they're being mean? Biblical church membership is not about feeling good every moment. Biblical church membership is not so short-term. If you wanted to describe high school relationships, you could probably do it by saying short-term. Biblical church membership is long-term. It's committed to being there for the rest of your life as far as you're concerned, unless circumstances make it impossible. It's not an easy in, easy out. You come there to be with people through thick and thin. And for that reason, it is, church membership is, more like a marriage or family relationship and commitment, where you come forward and you say, I want to be a part of this group for the rest of my life, if God's willing. I want to make a difference in these people's lives. I want to help them grow, and in fact, I need them to help me grow. I want to help them stay holy. I want them to help me stay holy. I want to love them. I want them to love me. Biblical church membership is about committing to one another as believers and holding one another in that loving, truthful relationship so that we're all satisfied and, and fulfilled with joy in our relationship with Christ because our brothers and sisters help us remain on the right track with Him, and also the joy and peace of having relationships with friends because we love and keep track of one another and meet one another's needs. Biblical church membership is the most like a marriage or family relationship and commitment. So the question is then, what is North Lake's role for you? If we're trying to be a biblical church, a group of people that's biblical, what is North Lake's role for you as an individual? For North Lake members, North Lake's role for you is, is to help you grow, is to invest in your life, get to know you, the people here, getting to know you more deeply, and you being open to relationships with these other people, actually sharing your life with them, actually giving them the trust to tell you where you could be wrong. That's why we do things like small groups in Sunday school. Because you've got to know people well enough that they can actually know your life, and if you get off the track, they can tell you that. And that's the be- that'll be the best decision you ever make. But what about for people that aren't members of North Lake, that are just around the world, around the country, or whatever? What is North Lake's role for you? I'll answer that by telling you a story. When I was in college, I listened to a jillion sermons by a guy named John Piper who pastored a church up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. For whatever reason, his teaching style really jived with my learning style, and I ate that stuff up. It helped me a ton in my spiritual growth. It helped me become a deeper disciple of Jesus and follow him more faithfully. But even given how great of a teacher John Piper is, his influence was still not as much on how I lived my life for Jesus as was the presence of my pastor and congregation at North Lake while I was in college and and after. The actual presence of people living in the same world that I'm living in, actually showing me by example how to live in this world for Jesus was far more impactful for my discipleship and for my Christian faith and security than just the sermons that John Piper preached, which were great. For that reason, I never felt the need to to try to join his church in Minneapolis because I could never be close friends with him. He could never be close friends with me. I could never be close friends with people in Minneapolis. And they couldn't with me. I don't know what it's like to live in a big, huge city like Minneapolis. And they don't probably know what it's like to live in a suburban, on the edge of rural area of Gainesville, Georgia. So I didn't try to join their church, but North Lake was my church. And that church was a supplement to my faith. And I think that that's probably a good description of what North Lake can be for you if you're far away. And that is a help. A, a supplement to your faith, a support, to, and a, maybe a guide to help you find a group of believers if you're not already a member of a church. If you are a member of a church, to encourage you 
in how to be a great member of that church, to make a difference in your church and through your church to the community around it. So we're here for general support for you, for supplementing your faith, and for being an additional resource in addition to your flesh and blood church group. Because joining and leaving a church is not simply an allegiance to an organization. Church is not an organization. The church organizes, but the church is a group of people. Anytime you join a church, you're committing to people. Anytime you leave a church, you're leaving people. You're not leaving a pastor, you're not leaving organizations. You're ending relationships with people. Sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes you have to move for the safe, safety and security and well-being of your family, and that makes perfect sense. But many times that's not the case when we join or leave churches. So if you're out there, you're not a member of North Lake and you're far away, we want to encourage you to continue building your faith by hearing our resources, by listening to our sermons, and by joining us for worship services. But we don't want that to ever replace or get in the way of you being at your church in your area where you can know people and they can know you in the area in which you live and you have to follow Jesus every day. That's the ideal. And we would love to help you on the side be that. If you don't have a biblical church in your area, I encourage you to take this lens that we've just provided you, the four things that I said, exalt the Savior, equip the saved, evangelize the sinner, encourage the soul, and actually go back to some churches in your area and analyze. If you don't have a lot of options, then it's a situation where beggars don't get to be choosers, where you might have to sacrifice preferences for substance if it comes down to it. So use this as a lens to help yourself divide between preference and substance. What's biblical and what's what do I just like? And maybe you'll find that you, there is a biblical church that you could go to. Or maybe you search with this lens and there's not one that you know of. You can go to websites like Acts 29 Network, and they have a, a tool, it's a church planning network that's national and international. They have a tool where you can put in your address, and you can actually look up what churches that are a part of their group, it's a biblical group, great belief system, that are in your area, churches that can actually be biblical churches for you, that might, you might add to your list to go visit and to see if it's a biblical church you can be a part of. Other one, another one might be the gospelcoalition.org, or you might go to your state convention or your national convention. Almost every country has a Baptist convention. You can look up their website, and you can search online. I looked up the Australian Baptist convention. They have one, for example. And you can go and search your address and see if there are any churches, Baptist churches, which are going to be pretty close to biblical most of the time, in your area. And I want to encourage you, don't think that a church has to be perfect. Uh, no church is perfect, but a church needs to have these things at least as their goal, their stated goal, these four things we've discussed. So, as we close tonight, I, I want to reiterate that membership is, is a label that we give to the biblical picture of a believer who is an essential, committed part of a body of believers through close personal relationship that leads to spiritual growth. Unfortunately, even with the advent of the internet and the increase in streaming and video conferencing, especially during this virus, the ability for people at a great distance to be deeply involved in one another's lives is extremely limited. There can be some interaction which is phenomenal, but it'll never match what is in flesh and blood. So tonight as we close, I want to give you a chance to, to respond and think about your scenario. We are going to put up our, our email address tonight. And if you have questions or want to follow up or, or need more guidance on this topic, uh, you want, even if you just want more scripture references and, and support for some of these points, feel free to, to send us an email and we'll get back to you and try to help guide you in, in what it means to be part of a biblical church and what it means to be that biblical church member where you are. So members of North Lake tonight, if you're, as you're watching just know that you must be committed to one another. You must be involved in one another's lives. It's not enough to come sit in the seats and go back home. That's why it's different when we come, we're able to actually come back in person. That's why you should come here when you can and when it's safe. Not just stay at home. It's not the same to worship online. It's, it's just not. The flesh and blood presence makes a difference, and God designed it that way. So be ready to be involved in one another's lives. Actually, maybe you'll appreciate it even more now. Be ready to love and to be loved. Be ready to be corrected and to correct. 
This will keep you joyful and holy in the faith. For others that are joining us tonight that aren't members of our church, that are believers, continue listening to our messages. Feel free to join us and stuff. We want to help you grow. We want to be there as a, a resource for your faith. But we want to encourage you even more to be a part of a biblical church in your area because that's going to make a bigger impact than we ever could. Finally, if you're not a believer and you're watching tonight and you hear me talk about fellowship and friendship and joy and discipline and you, you think, you know, I don't really have any friends. I don't know anybody like that. Why would I even feel that open? It's because Jesus died on the cross to take away our sins. He's actually made us new people and fills us with his joy so that we can actually share that joy together through the unity of the Holy Spirit. So I want to invite you tonight to accept Jesus, to follow him, give your life to him, so that he can forgive you of your sins. The Holy Spirit can come in you and change your whole life. And then I want to encourage you to find a group of believers that you can be a part of, that are a biblical group that you can grow with and fulfill your joy as a Christian following Jesus in a holy life. So a believer has to commit to developing relationships with a specific group of believers for the long term and for the spiritual growth of the group and the individual. It goes both ways. God has you where you are for a purpose. He wants you to impact and be impacted there. So if there's no biblical churches after all the searching, maybe you need to start one. Maybe you need to be the missionary that starts it. And we can give you resources for helping with that too. What, what kind of church member are you being? What kind of church member does the Bible call you to be? What changes and commitments do you need to make? In the words of Hebrews 10, 24 through 25, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful tonight to be able to look at your word, to understand what it means to be a biblical church, to understand what it means uh, to be a part of that group, to be one member of that group. Lord, I pray you would drill into our hearts the need to, to see it as relationship, long-term committed relationship, and when we join a church, we're getting to know people. We're committing to know them and be friends with them, to be family with them, and even more. And Lord, that also when we leave a church, that we're leaving relationships and that the weight of that would sink into our hearts. We'd be grateful for the friendships and warm, uh, godly love that we've experienced from one another in the church. And we might continue to be built up by one another, encouraged and also corrected, so we might walk in joy following you. We might walk in holiness in this world to bring others to know you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.